culture of washing away. In the 80s, it was bought by racing impresario Roger Penske, who turned it into a palace of speed. A brand new 30,000 seat grandstand is stone sold out. More than 50,000 on hand for round four, the PPG Kart World Series. Welcome to the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix. We're just moments from the command to start engine. Let's go straight to trackside and Gary Gerald. Bob, one of the beauties of racing on the mile ovals is the unpredictable factor, and certainly here's evidence right here. For the first time in the last 12 races, Alex Zanardi, number two in points, winner at Long Beach, is not in the front row. In fact, he's back here in the 21st starting position in row 11. It is wild. It's wacky on these mile ovals. You talk about major challenges today. I can't imagine a bigger one than starting 21st. Let's go to our colleague in the pits, Jack Aroot. Well, Gary, Michael Andretti, hometown hero, is on the outside pole position, but a week, uh, two weeks ago, he had to retire his car after left rears continued to deflate. It came time after time. What they found out was this tire gauge malfunctioned. The tires were always underinflated. Let's go back a year ago for Paul Tracy. He clips the track record here only to come crashing into his teammates during the first pit stop. Tracy is back again on the pole position, but what CART has done this year is they have changed the pit area. There are dotted lines now that give what's called a courtesy zone. Should make things a little bit easier for cars getting in and out of pit area. It remains to be seen. Bob? Courtesy is the last thing you'll find in a racetrack when the race is underway. Thank you, Jack. And hello, everyone. I'm Bob Varsha, along with former Nazareth pole sitter and race winner Danny Sullivan. Danny, what does it take to race well here at Nazareth? Well, your car has got to work well in traffic all the way through a fuel run of 70 laps. It's got to work all day long. That's the key. This is a place that if your car is working well, it's one of the most fun racetracks you'll ever drive. If it is not working well, it's one of the longest days of your racing career. And I believe the Penske team has that magical setup after all those testing miles they have here. They have tested well over 10,000 miles, much of it in the hands of Paul Tracy, who was on the pole for today's race. And that Penske magic is spreading around. Tom Brown used to work for Roger Penske. Now he works for Gary Bettenhausen. They have their best qualifying performance ever. Now it's time for those magic words. Let's get down to our starter. Gentlemen, start your engines. The fires are now lit. Now let's get back to the story of the Bettenhausen team and their rookie driver, Patrick Carpentier, who is on row two for this race, Gary Gerald. What a marvelous job he did. The rookie who won the Atlantic Championship starts right behind pole sitter Paul Tracy. Tony Bettenhausen, this is as great a job as any driver you've ever had has done. It equals the record of Stefan Johansson qualifying third in Portland. Your emotions right now as you get ready to turn this rookie loose. Well, Team Alia Max is very excited right now we think we've got a good race car and we think we can run with those guys in the front row all day long and if we can give him good pit stops I think we got a great shot and there are a bunch of other teams experiencing the same emotion thinking the theme's not as the field starts to pull away all right, thank you, Gary. Now let's take a look at the starting grid as the field rolls off. On the pole for the second straight year with his second straight track record, Paul Tracy, six tenths of a second quicker than anyone else in the morning warm-up. Alongside Michael Andretti, the defending race winner who also won here in 1987. Row two, Patrick Carpentier in the best starting position of his young career, fifth in the morning warm-up. Next to him, Jill DeFerrin, who has yet to finish in two previous Nazareth starts, but he is very tough. On row three, Mauricio Gugelman, his best ever start on a one-mile oval, Next to him is Brazilian countryman Marul Boizel. He led 27 laps at Long Beach two weeks ago, the first lead for Boizel in a long time. Row four will be Alonzer Jr., third quick in the warm-up. Penske's team looking very good here. Next to him, Bobby Rahal, whose last win in the series came here at Nazareth in 1992. On row five, Brian Herta, a sixth at Long Beach, is his best finish of the year. Next to him will be Greg Moore, the young Canadian who charged a second on this track a year ago. Row six will be Scott Pruitt, who won on the streets of Surf for Paradise Australia and who has won on an oval before. Next to him will be the defending series champion, Jimmy Vassar, who has scored points in every race this year. On row seven, Walter Salas, who ran here last year in the Indy Lights category. Next to him, Richie Hearn, the highest starting Lola chassis in the field and second quickest in this morning's practice. On row eight, Andre Ribeiro, all three of his career wins have come on ovals. Next to him, Mark Blundell from Great Britain, his first start on the Nazareth Mile. Row nine will be Parker Johnstone, who already has two top ten 
10 finishes this year for Barry Green. Next to him, the Scots Italian Dario Franchitti, one of eight drivers making his first Nazareth start. On row 10 will be Adrian Fernandez and another of the Lolas in this field. Next to him, Roberto Moreno, his best career finish. A third place came on an oval. He's standing in for the injured Christian Fittipaldi. On row 11, Alex Zanardi, his worst career start, but he was sixth in the morning warm-up. He'll be moving forward. Max Pappas will be alongside his first start on a one-mile oval in any type of race car. On row 12, P.J. Jones for Dan Gurney's All-American racers, Reynard Toyotas. Next to him, Michelle Jourdain for ex-NFL star Walter Payton and Payton Coin Racing. On row 13, Juan Fangio the second and the second All-American racers Reynard Toyota. And next to him, Japanese driver Hiro Matsushita, his seventh start at Nazareth. Danny, let's talk about the racetrack. Well, it's a very tough racetrack right down here in turn one, this area right there. It is a real bottleneck at the start. Coming through turn two is the fastest part right down, and you'll see a lot of people passing around the outside, all the way around there if their car is working. A little braking down in here to turn three into that area, and very quick off. That's also a place we've seen a lot of incidents right off in this area, coming back to the leaderboard right in that area right there. Here's a look at our race analysis. The oval one mile around the race length, 225 laps, that many miles. It's been lengthened from 200 laps a year ago. Race record set in a 200-mile race, Nigel Mansell back in 1993. The pit window, about 60 laps. It'll be interesting to see if anybody tries to do this on two pit stops as opposed to three. Here are the stories we'll be following. The Goodyear comeback. Two weeks ago in Long Beach, Firestone swept the podium, but Goodyear has seven of the top 10 starting positions here today. Pit strategy will be primary. The pits are very crowded here at Nazareth. It'll be interesting to watch it unfold. Penske, this is their home track. Will we see some home cooking? Tracy's on pole, Unzer Jr. in the seventh spot. And then there is the story of traffic, Danny. Well, I think traffic plays a big part here. You're on a mile over, you are in traffic all the time. They'll go about three or four laps and then they'll catch some slower cars. Guys will be readjusting all day long. Traffic is gonna be the key. Now we are going to start the race under yellow. There appears to be some debris on the racetrack. These laps will count. Let's get down to Jack Aroot. Not very quickly, our current point leader, Scott Pruitt, mired back in 11th starting spot. Why? Well, Firestone didn't get a chance to test here. Inclement weather precluded them. So he leads the Firestone Brigade with questionable tires in terms of development. But they've worked very hard. Pruitt qualified on the optional tire. But you see these tires here? They are the primary tires. Present thinking is that the Brahma team, Pruitt and Boisel both, during the first pit stop, will go back to the primary tire. It's a little harder, but it should operate a little bit better on full fuel loads. Gary? You mentioned the fact that Richie Hearn had the second fast speed behind Tracy in the morning warm-up. The Lola people have been doing a lot of wind tunnel research in England. One of the end results, as we look at a spare nose wing for Hearn, is a much larger flap here on the front wing. They're crediting this to much more downforce, keeping in mind that with the current rules on the mile ovals this year, no longer do they have the little wicker bill strip on the rear wing that helped provide downforce. So the change on this front nose piece has helped the Lolas. Hearn starts 14th. He was fast this morning. Morning. Can he be fast through traffic? We're about to find out. Now, the reason for our delay was a dust devil. A big cloud of dust kicked up just outside the turn three area. Officials wanted to make sure we weren't going to have some dust out there making this racetrack slick. It is a unique racetrack with a lot of elevation changes, something you rarely, if ever, find on an oval. Jack Aroot. Well, Bob Max Pappas had a problem. The MCI car for RCRO Wells, Richard Buck and the team, diagnosed what it was it was the black box now in layman's terms what that is is the computerized brain for the engine performance they changed the box put the bonnet back on he's back out on the racetrack All right thanks jack now danny we talked about traffic and we've talked about pit strategy we are starting under yellow one lap is already complete now in fact we have two laps complete one lap to the green flag we are told what does that do to psychology and perhaps to strategy well, I don't think it's enough time under there to change the strategy. One or two laps is not going to be a big factor in the fuel battle. If it had been 10 or 15, that might have been a factor. And all it does is give everybody more time to warm up their tires. These guys are pumped up. They're ready to go. If they go an extra lap, it's, it's not a big factor for them. Now you see the double file forming up. We will go green to abreast in just a moment. And that will be the only time, even though this is under yellow, they will start the race to abreast 
but not after this. It'll be single foul from now on. This is the 11th race here at Nazareth. Fifth time we've had yellow on the first lap. We have green now. We are underway. Paul Tracy and Michael Andretti slot into turn one, first and second. A sellout crowd on hand as the speeds build on the long back straightaway. Paul Tracy with three quick car lengths on Michael Andretti. Patrick Carpentier is fourth. Make that third for Carpentier. Gilles Deferrin runs in the fourth spot. As you watch Paul Tracy, who has been absolutely devastating around the track all weekend. And look at that lead that he's pulling out right there. He is definitely hooked up. Guys, Andre Ribeiro has a flat tire, so what they're trying to do is, now they're saying no. They think there's an engine problem. They've looked to the rear of the car. They have shut it off. Guys, what it is, is it's a CV joint and the drive shaft. It's loose on the left-hand side. Back to you. Oh, what a disappointment for Ribeiro. A proven winner in PPG kart competition. As you watch Patrick Carpentier in the Alumac-sponsored Reynard for Gary, uh, Tony Bettenhausen. And that CV joint that connects the drive shaft right there, that's what holds everything. It can be a very critical. And now we have the yellow flag and a debris flag, and that may be the result of Andre Ribeiro's problem. We'll take this opportunity for a quick break. We expected things to happen quickly, and they are. We'll be back with the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix in just a moment. Stay with us. A jam-packed Nazareth Speedway playing host to the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix. Bob Varsha and Danny Sullivan with you. There is our race leader, Paul Tracy. We are under yellow with 10 laps complete. Two weeks ago, Paul Tracy made headlines when he was fined $25,000 for several incidents of alleged rough driving in Long Beach, California. Earlier this weekend, we talked with Paul about his fellow racing drivers and are they friends? Among the drivers, I would say everybody is, you know, everybody's friendly, but uh, they'll slit your throat for five cents. I mean, it's very, very cutthroat as much as Formula One or any other type of real high-level sport. Everybody is here to win, and everybody gets along. But when you're out on the track, it's, you know, it's, it's no fun, fun and games about it. They're out there to, to beat you and, and beat the next guy. Well, I think he's got a good point there, and it's gotten more competitive. There's more at stake. The teams are more competitive. Everybody's trying to move up. Uh, there's a lot of that that goes on. There, that's within reason too. I don't think you're going to see guys launching people into the stands or anything like that or bump, rough driving other than where they can maybe move a guy over a little bit and try to get by there. Um, we've all still have to respect each other's space out there and realize that your life as much as theirs is in that person's hands. Especially at these speeds. You saw the new record lap set by Paul Tracy as the green flag waves and we are back underway. Paul Tracy leading Michael Andretti, Patrick Carpentier, Gilles DeFerrin, and Mauricio Guzman, Alan Zoo Jr. runs 6th, Raul Boisel 7th, Bobby Rahal 8th, Greg Moore ninth, and Jimmy Vassar 10th. You might also wonder why they have those yellows like that. If they see something out there that can cut a tire, uh, that's one of the most dangerous things on an oval. And the yellow is back out from the flag stand, a single waving yellow. There is Greg Moore. Word he's got no. Oh, he's got something coming out of the back of his car. Looks like fluids coming out of the back of his car. He was reported to have almost lost control, and fluid might explain it. So we are back under yellow here at Nazareth. They'll have a look at Moore's car. There's the running order at the moment. We'll be back with more from Nazareth. Back live at Nazareth, Pennsylvania, last year's runner-up at the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix, Greg Moore sits forlornly in his pits with steam coming out of the engine compartment. Danny Sullivan. Well, you see, whoa, great save right there, real sideways. Now we're going to see, freeze it right there, right down in this area, right there is the fluid coming out as it goes forward, it'll go right under that back tire. See the fluid going out right underneath there, right under that tire, turned him sideways. Might be a radiator. Let's get down to Jack Aroot. Well, Danny, it's down by the radiator. And, Bob, what the problem is, is it was a quick disconnect area. The fitting cracked and the water ran out. And so Greg Moore sits in the pits. We are back under green, and Paul Tracy leads Michael Andretti. 
Now, of course, we keep having these yellows like this. This might become a factor on the fuel stop. So we just got to keep an eye on how many. Look at this. Alan Alan Jr. Jr. going under right. Big Mo. Unzer Jr. up into fifth spot. Gugelman drops to sixth. And here comes Raul Boisel, also around Gugelman. You ride with the Brazilian Boisel. That long turn three down to the flag stand. Boisel has been dogged by horrible racing luck the last few years. His lead at Long Beach two weeks ago, the first clear track he's had in front of him in several seasons. Boisel appears to be closing up a little bit on Allenzer Jr. Now we climb aboard with Bobby Rahal in the number eight spot. He too has Gugelman in his sights. It has been 69 races since Bobby Rahal last won. That race came here at Nazareth back in 1992. This is his 70th start since his last win. And that win, incidentally, was the third and most recent of his PPG Cart World Series championships. Tremendous G forces on the drivers, as many as four lateral G's through turn two and onto this backstretch. There's Richie Hearn, who had such a disappointing weekend at Long Beach, where he broke on the opening laps in his sponsor's home race. Jack Aroot in the pits. Guys, Patrick Carpentier has a problem, and it's a telemetry problem. And Danny Sullivan, what's happened is all the telemetry coming from the car to the pit area has conked out. So he may have the telemetry on board. They don't have it in the pits. That should make for some lengthy pit stops because they can't tell what the car is doing before it gets here. Well, hopefully in those situations, you just race the best you can. They might call in for the fuel to know how much fuel is used but they'll try to pit with everybody else. At this point, Jack, they've just got to keep racing, even if they've got a problem. Flashing across the start-finish line, Allenzer Jr. in fifth, and you see the gap back to Raul Boisel. Allenzer Jr. has been revitalized here on Penske Racing's home track at Nazareth. In his 16th season, can it have been that long? I know I've raced against him for years, and uh, he's awful tough, and he hasn't lost anything. Just ahead of Unzer Jr. is Gilles DeFerrin. Al Jr. looks like he's closing on uh, Gilles DeFerrin there. Lapping at approximately 21.5 seconds per lap. Things happen quickly here at Nazareth. And Unzer is definitely closing up on DeFerrin. That's Al Unzer Jr. in that bright red and white car on your screen. Just in front of him in the blue and white is uh, Gilles DeFerrin. Traffic will play a factor here of how quick they can get through there. Juan Fangio the second just ahead trying for the high line and that's another important point about traffic even if you want to get out of the way Danny it's difficult it is very difficult they want to let the guy by but they often can't because there's only one line through here in a lot of spots and as we see that gap right there has helped Joe DeFerrin he got by Allen to Jr. couldn't he has to wait a little bit longer see how tight it is there's a slow car all the way down there on the yellow trying to stay out of your way but you still have to wait for him Cars are flat through this corner. And traffic is making a difference up front. Paul Tracy. There's Gilles DeFerrin, that blue and white, going up underneath another car. But Al Jr. has to wait on him. He'll try to slip by right in here. 
Michelle Jordan for Peyton Coin Racing with Alanzer Jr. right behind him and DeFerrin drawing away. And you saw how Alanzer Jr. got held right there behind him. He couldn't get through him in turn one. He lost that ground. And now Boisel has to deal with the problem. See again, Raul Boisel couldn't get by in turn one. He'll lose that ground he made up. Back on the lead, Paul Tracy, who's been closed up on by Michael Andretti. And Andretti, clearly the quicker car now. He looked like he slowed there. He I was, was about to say before, Tracy has been getting slower, a couple of tenths slower than the cars behind him for the previous few laps. Bob Varsha, word from the Michael Andretti pit. We've been monitoring radio conversations, and they have instructed him on two occasions to go up on the boost, a total of three clicks. They, I think, were concerned early with the race pace set by Tracy. Michael, following his strategy to perfection, caught it on a perfect timing, and in that first corner, grabbed the lead. Now he's coming up on Dario Franchitti. We have a car in the wall. It is Gualter Salas, the young Brazilian rookie. is down in turn three. Yep. Heavy contact at the right rear. And of course, this will come into some fuel strategy here because they're inside one of those windows that it takes that they could make a stop right now. And if Paul Tracy's having a problem with his car, he might elect to stop. This taking place on lap number 37. You see Salas moving in the car. Let's take another look at what happened. Slight car in the back there. He just got it sideways. He just lost it. Backs up. First place you go, right there to the fence. Rode over that tire a little bit there. Luckily, didn't hit another car coming back across the track. Wow, you get an idea of the tremendous energy built up by these cars at speed. We're under a full course caution. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Next Saturday here on ABC Sports, great golf action coming your way from the Shell Houston Open. Last year's champ Mark Brooks beat fellow Texan Jeff Maggard in a playoff that had the Lone Star State enthralled. Our coverage begins Saturday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 1.30 Central, 3 Pacific here on ABC Sports. Guys, you're looking at the half shaft that came off of Andre Ribeiro's car. You see these bearings here? Well, one doesn't exist there. That's got to put the fear into you. Well, it's a big disappointment. We need uh, definitely time on the track. This puts us a little bit behind, but we're still fighting. The good, good thing about this team is they, we never give up. And he wants to go back to Brazil, where he's the defending champion. That's the next one up for this team. All right, thank you, Jack. There's Mario Andretti. Patriarch of perhaps the greatest family in American motor racing. We thought it was appropriate to pay Mario a visit this weekend. He emigrated here from Italy in the 1950s and still lives here as he settles into retirement. On a quiet Nazareth street, Mario and wife Deanne live in the house they've shared for more than 30 years, beginning a new life. What has affected me the most is, is, is the idea that I'm not really driving week in and week out. These days, Mario wears a radio, watching over son Michael, who has a glittering record of his own, but may still need dad's wisdom. I'm trying to do some of the things I wish someone could have done for me when I was racing. It is very satisfying knowing what he's going through, what he's dealing with, and watch him do it right. Uh, watch him be successful. Yeah, that is for a father. Yeah, that is the ultimate satisfaction in many ways. In his home, Mario displays the trophies of a racing life. His favorite? Hard to say, but start with recognition as the best of the last 25 years. You look at the driver of the quarter century, you know, somehow it just really, really means tremendously to me because it, it just sort of brings about, you know, almost an era, you know, of driving and, uh, uh, you know, it's just, like I said, you know, that uh, you do have, you can make, you could create a story around almost every one of them. The Andretti family dynasty may soon be joined by Michael's son, Marco. Once upon a time, little Michael asked Mario for a racing cart. And Marco did exactly the same thing. He said, Dad, I'd like to, to drive a go-kart. So he said, okay, you know, we'll get you a go-kart. And um, 
Where that will take him, obviously, stay tuned. I can tell you it is a pleasure to stand in Mario Andretti's trophy room. He is a hero around the world of motorsports. We are preparing to go back to green here at Nazareth. Let's get down to Gary Gerald. Quick reports. Boisel made a pit stop under the yellow. 12 seconds flat. They did go to the primary tire. They're looking for durability the rest of the way. A quick conversation with Gerald Davis, who, of course, is the head man for Walter Salas. He said that he only radioed that the car was going loose. Then they had the impact. Gary, here's a quick update on ball tracing. Never heard this before. The car is too good coming out of the corners. It makes the nose want to stick. And he's a little bit concerned about that. Said it's not really a push, Danny Sullivan. He said it's simply too good coming out of the corners. Thank you, gentlemen. The flag waves from starter Jim Swindoll, and we are underway once again. Michael Andretti first, Paul Tracy second, and between them, Alex Zanardi is one lap down. You watch Mauricio Gugelman, who runs in the sixth spot. Through turn two and on to the back stretch. That actually is a problem, what Jack mentioned. That right rear tire is the one that does most of the work. And if it gives up, so if the car is too good, he doesn't want to use it too hard or the car will go loose. He's got to go about 70 laps before he changes. So he's probably being a little bit conservative. He'll make an adjustment in this pit stop. That shows a lot of confidence. We're working lap number 47 of 225 scheduled as you look at Al Unzer Jr. in the fifth spot. Two-time series champion still looking for his first victory here at Nazareth. You can almost sense the confidence in the Penske team. They know this racetrack so well, and they know that their car works so well on it. Closes up on Gilles de Ferran in fourth. The car ahead of them is Max Pappas, who runs a lap down. De Ferran on the left, Unzer on the right, with slower traffic ahead. Unzer closes in on De Ferran. Gary Gerald. Interesting that during that break, one of the things Michael Andretti was on the radio about, his concern about how Al Unser was doing. So obviously, he knows that Tracy is fast. He respects Unser and his capability on this racetrack. He's worried about both of those Penske cars. 20 years ago, we would have been talking about another Andretti-Unzer rivalry. Right now, it's Michael Andretti and Al Unser Jr. Oh. Right now, Unser Jr. is trying to get around Gilles Deferrin and does it, threading the needle. Boy, did he squeak through there. One thing I'll say about the Penske team, too, is if they don't have a car that's perfect right now, they will keep fiddling with it all day and try to get it right there for the end because that's when they really want to race for the win. Unzer Jr. is fourth and on the charge as you watch Michael Andretti with slower traffic ahead of him and Paul Tracy now right behind him. And Tracy goes high. Andretti low as they go around Greg Moore in the blue and white machine. And Tracy is forced up high. Uh, what happens, he got up there so high. Mark Michael's going in the pits. Gary Gerald awaits him in the Newman Haas pit. This caught everybody by surprise here. The team scrambled over the wall. They laid the tires out. The crew member now waves for Michael Andretti as he hits pit road. This is very early. We don't know what the problem may be. He arrives. We'll wait and watch. Reset your fuel. Keep your revs up. Everything appears to be routine. Revs up. Revs up. Off the jack, rolling. We've got him under 12 seconds. He smokes the tires out of here. This taking place on lap number 54. Now that has to be about what their fuel window would have been if not for the early yellow flags. Yeah, but that's still, I think, out of step. What that tells me just sitting here is his tires were probably going away. And that's something that only the driver really knows. If the car is starting to slide too much, he might say, hey, if we're inside the window, let's go ahead and stop and try to get some tires on here, make a little adjustment, and get back out. And, Danny, that's exactly what Roger Penske, who's calling the shots for Al Unser Jr., radioed to his driver. He made the call that Andretti pitted for tires, started telling Al Jr., make sure you take care of your tires. You ride with Roberto Moreno sitting in for the injured Christian Fittipaldi. Moreno shown in 18th spot right now. We talk about those tires. I, I can't emphasize that enough. If you've got to go 
70 laps. If they go off with 20 laps to go and you start losing a second a lap and you're sliding around, think how much ground. 20 laps, that's an entire lap you're going to lose on that person you're trying to race. Bobby Rahal on the left in the blue and white Miller Lite sponsored Raynar running in sixth spot. He's got Richie Hearn behind him in seventh. Hearn started 14th. Remember, he was second quickest this morning in practice. Hearn is flying back to the pit lane. And it was immediately Peter Gibbons jumping on the rear tire as it came off. And the tire is down here with a Goodyear engineer. And what they found was a very small cut. It was losing air. It didn't deflate rapidly, as was the case at Long Beach. But he got into a piece of debris somewhere. And that cut costly at this early stage. Michael Andretti now shown in 17th place on the racetrack, just ahead of his teammate, Roberto Moreno. Well, don't forget, though, he has fueled and he stopped. So if there's no yellow, th that'll readjust itself as they go along. Now, that's good news for him. We have a crash on the backstretch. I believe that might be, is it Michelle Jourdain? No, it's Adrian Fernandez. The red and yellow, uh, green colors kind of threw me off there for a moment. You see him backwards up against the wall. Now that, that actually hurt Michael Andretti because they, everybody else will now stop. It'll drop him back a long way. But the good news for Michael Andretti is that it was a cut tire. Didn't mean that it was going away. Here's another look at what happened on the back straightaway coming at you. Can't really see what happened, but it looks like at that point that he just got the car sideways, spun around and backed it up in there to the fence. Now, Fernandez was complaining all weekend that the car was loose at the back, and that may have been what caught him out there in turn two, all this taking place on lap 61. There is Michael Andretti, who pretty much needed this race to go green for a while. This is the fifth full course caution of the day at Nazareth. And the record for the most yellows in the race is five, set in 1990 and 95. There's Paul Tracy, the race leader. We'll take another look from our Honda Helicam at the accident suffered by Adrian Fernandez. There you see him spinning at the top of your screen. Yeah, he just lost it at the end of turn two. That often, that's the place you're going to do it. That, cor that corner is so fast. And it, it, if the car's going loose, it just gets up there. There's a little bump about three quarters of the way through it. He probably got a little sideways, couldn't control it. And away you go. And on an oval, unfortunately, you usually tend to go to the wall. He had a car behind him, but not one in front of him as he spun it into the backstretch wall. Paul Tracy remains the leader. Patrick Carpentier runs in second place. That's Parker Johnstone, second in line right now with Greg Moore, another car back. Here's a program note coming your way. One of the greatest events in sports here on ABC. Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Time on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the first jewel in the Visa Triple Crown Challenge, the 123rd running of the Kentucky Derby, live from Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky, Saturday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC's Wide World of Sports. There you see the cleanup continuing on the backstretch. There's Fernandez out of the car with hands on hips and helmet on the wall. His race has been run. Tracy now heads for the pits. Lead lap cars allowed in the pits. Yes, they've just opened the pit. That's why everybody's still out there. They close the pits for everybody, get them bunched up, then they allow the lead cars to come in first. 60 mile an hour speed limit. Paul Tracy has had adventures in the pits before, but this but is a not today, guys, not oh, today, but there's a major wing adjustment. Now, the man that's had the problem is Patrick Carpentier directly in front of Paul Tracy. He dived into his pit stall. They were not able to complete the service, had to send him back out. In the meantime, in the meantime, Carpentier has got himself straightened away, but he's losing valuable time. Alan Sir Jr. has completed his work. Tracy has completed his. The work continues on Patrick Carpentier. They have now finished it, and they're still not able to get the car refired. This is a difficult time for Tony Bettenhausen and company. Problem. And not very, very good, Bob. And not a good stop, and everybody down here in the Alumex crew very disappointed. Problems with the right rear for Patrick Carpentier and the Bettenhausen team. You saw Paul Tracy leaving the pits well outside the courtesy zone. We'll be back with more from Nazareth Speedway in a moment. 
to Helicam High over Nazareth Speedway. We are preparing to go back to green at the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix after the first DNF of the year for Adrian Fernandez. Stand by for more from the hills of Pennsylvania and the roots of short track racing. Welcome back to Nazareth Speedway in the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix. We have just gone green, and the race leader is Raul Boisel. Second, Dario Franchitti about to be passed by Paul Tracy. Boisel and Franchitti stayed on the racetrack during the last yellow flag. That put them in first and second. Now Paul Tracy, who was the race leader when we went to our fifth yellow flag of the day, moves up into second place. Don't forget, too, they're both a little lighter on fuel because they stopped around lap 38. So they're a little lighter on on the fuel and it's been a pretty good call so far. There's our green flag race average speed exclusive of the five yellow flag full course cautions we've had thus far as you watch Paul Tracy who is back on his horse and flying that last lap 20.3 seconds two tenths of a second quicker than race leader Boisel. Don't forget everybody that pitted to a lot of them made wing adjustments. I saw everybody taking front wing out of their car which gives them a little bit more understeer. There is Bobby Rahal in blue and white machine trying to hold off Al Unzer Jr. The order is Boisel, Tracy, Franchitti, Gugelman, DeFerrin, Rahal and Unzer right there. Richie Hearn, Jimmy Vassar, and Brian Herda, the top ten. Scott Pruitt runs 11. Then Mark Blundell, Patrick Carpentier, who was in great position before an extra long pit stop. Michael Andretti is 14th, Parker Johnstone 15th. See Al Unzer Jr. in that red and white car pull out and take a look. See if he could get by Bobby. Great champions, two of the elder statesmen. Look at him go again. Racing. The identical move that Tracy put on Franchitti. But you see Bobby made a good move there, just let him go, break a little early, tucked right in there behind him. Minus 12 on fuel, minus 12. Here are the pit crew communications as you look back. That's looking back at Paul Tracy's car, leader in front in that bright yellow and orange car is Raul Bozell. They're Slower in traffic. traffic. Yep. This is going to be a factor. See that wing adjust? See how high Paul Tracy's getting out there? He doesn't have as much bite in the front, so he's drifting out a little bit, particularly when he's behind the car, because it takes the air away. Well, we've been watching Paul Tracy lap this place at tremendous speed all weekend, and he gets right out to those concrete walls. He is not intimidated one bit. But don't forget, they make those adjustments to go all the way through the 70 laps. Because as the fuel load lightens, the car will start handling a little bit different. And the driver has to adjust. Absolutely. Just ahead of race leader Boisel is Greg Moore. There you see the numbers on Boisel. And you see the jump he made during that last caution period to first place. But here comes Tracy. See, he lost a little ground there. He got out a little high as he got close. That disturbed air. He lost a little bit on the front of the car. Oh, we have a car down on the grass. Was that Max Max Pappas, Pappas in the MCI car for RCR Wells? It appears it is. And look at this. That's Paul Tracy. Paul Tracy and Dario Franchitti were side by side, but the yellow has come out. For this incident, Max Pappas, he has hit nothing, but apparently he has lost the fire. We'll be back to the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Back live at Nazareth, Pennsylvania, you ride with defending PPG Car World Series champion Jimmy Vassar in eighth place as we get set to go green. Tonight on ABC, a completely new hour of America's Funniest Home Videos, followed by a brand new special edition of Turning Point from ABC News. Then it's finally here. The television event entertainment weekly calls the most frightening movie ever made for television. A brand new version of Stephen King's The Shining, starring Rebecca De Mornay and Stephen Weber. Don't miss this one tonight here on ABC.
Down to Jack Root. Bob, you see these pressure gauges right here on Paul Tracy's cars? They radio back what the actual pressure is. That's what kept Paul Tracy from having to come on to pit road. They were concerned that maybe he had that problem. They looked at the telemetry, said, everything's okay, Paul. Let's check in with Gary Gerald. And on this yellow, it was an opportunity for Raul Boisel, the race leader, to come in and get service in 11.6 seconds. Everything routine. He stayed on the primary compound. Michael Andretti and their crew also here checking the latest tires to come off the car. He made his second pit stop. He's getting closer Boisel, to the sequence with the leaders as we get ready now to go back green. Andretti, Bozell, Parker, Johnstone all pitted under the last yellow. Michael Andretti is back on the lead lap. Max Pappas's car in the pits. They towed him in. That was the reason for a record-setting sixth full-course caution here at Nazareth. We're back underway. Paul Tracy, Dario Franchitti, Mauricio Gugelman, who gained three positions on his last pit stop. Gilles DeFerrin runs fourth. Al Unser Jr. fifth. As you watch, Paul Tracy. And a part of the massive crowd assembled here at Nazareth for today's race. Boy, look at him pull away. He must like that clear air. He's out there in front. Nobody disturbing the air to the car. It's balanced the way he wants to. And he's going to push it as hard as he can and get as big a lead. Dario Franchitti, young Scots Irishman, uh, Italian, I should say. Begging your pardon, Dario. Dario Speedwagon, as he known to his team, driving for Carl Hogan. This is his first taste of short track oval racing. Gilles DeFerrin with Al Enzer Jr., fourth and fifth. That battle's been raging a while. Al, Al's been trying to get by him for quite a while. Every time he seems to get close, looks like he's going to make a move, something comes up. Well, we talked about this earlier, Danny. DeFerrin has been quick at every track we've been to. He's just been plagued by rotten racing luck. He has that. They've been up there. He's been leading races. He was on the pole at Long Beach. He's he's had a tremendous run, but uh, like you said, bad luck, crashes. I would imagine they really want to come away from here with some points. Gilda Farron in the red, white, and blue Valvoline car, left of your screen, driving for the vastly experienced Derek Walker, who took Danny Sullivan to a victory on this track in 1988. They have three Raynard chassis in their garage. Each of them has been crashed at least once this year. Jill DeFerrin and wife Angela celebrating the birth of their latest child, Luke Anthony, born a week ago last Thursday. Mother and child doing fine. In fact, let's get out the baby pictures. There is Angela on the right with little Luke and proud Papa on the left. Luke Anthony, named for Jill's dad and Angela's dad. A welcome new member to the family. I understand his big sister might even be ready to accept him now. There is Gilles DeFerrin, who ended Alex Zanardi's streak of consecutive pole positions at six at Long Beach, California, two weeks ago. Zanardi right now running in 17th place. I kind of expected to see him move up in this race, but he is not having much luck back there. On that last lap, Al Enzo Jr. was a tenth of a second quicker than DeFerrin. Slow moving, one of the All-American Racers cars. I believe that was P.J. Jones. See, and that just cost Al Unser Jr. just a little bit because he had to lift there. Just it's a very cautious place to go out there in that second lane, get out there where it's dirty. He's closed back up quickly, though. Flash across the start-finish line. That tells me that his car is probably a little bit quicker than DeFerrin's if he closed back up that quickly. But it's difficult when you're behind him. You've got to get by and get away in front. How much does Al Unser Jr. like his car? Just a couple of laps ago, he radioed into Roger Penske, and this is a quote, I just love my car, end of quote. And that has to be bad news for everybody else. When a racer like Al Unser Jr. likes the machine he has under him, watch out. We've Come got in. a lot of racing in front of us. There's a lot to go, a lot of things to happen, a lot of laps through traffic. We have just completed 100 laps of 225 scheduled. Now DeFerrin draws out just a little bit. This is for second place now. Dario Franchitti 
in the dark blue and silver machine with Hogan on the side. And just behind him, Mauricio Gujelman is, ooh, almost too close. He's in that bright red, white, and blue Hollywood car. Driving for PacWest Racing. PacWest sponsors the next two stops on the PPG Kart World Series. The Rio 400 and a 300 lapper at Gateway, the new oval. So they're calling it the PacWest 700 in the month of May. Great racing right there. I tell you, Dario has really adjusted well. First time on a short oval. He's out there uh, mixing it up with some of the best. Now slower traffic ahead of Gilles Deferrin in fourth with Al Unser Jr. in fifth looking down the inside. That's that's not exactly slower traffic right there. That's, uh, that's Frank Dario Franchitti right there. So Gujelman is now in second behind Paul Tracy. Franchitti third, Deferrin fourth, Al Unser Jr. fifth. And he continues to dog the gearbox of Jill Deferrin. Bobby Ray Hall is sixth, Richie Hearn seventh. He is moving up. Jimmy Vassar is eighth, Brian Hurd a ninth, Scott Pruitt tenth. 104 laps complete. With this long stretch of green flag racing, you can bet the calculators are out in the pit lane. the halfway mark when we reach 113 laps. 13 laps. 13 laps. We will be an official race. Now Franchitti comes under fire from DeFerrin. This is for third. Allenzer Jr. watching it all. That, those three cars right there all for position. Franchitti in the front. Look at this. Reynard Mercedes. Reynard Honda. Penske Mercedes. Greg Moore going slowly. He's back in the race after that fluid problem in the side pod early on. Young Canadian out there hoping for some points. Now Franchitti able to draw away. DeFerrin will have to deal with Moore. overhead that is shadowing the racetrack that will keep temperatures down on the track to some degree but the air is quite warm compared to what we've seen the last couple of days here at Nazareth. Gary Gerald has a report from the pits. Derek Walker, Gilles DeFerrin in our pre-race show alluded to the fact that they thought there was still a chance to make this a two-stop race even at the extended distance this year of 225 miles. We just checked with Derek Walker and he says the possibility is still there. It is slim. We've also heard that the Pac West team is contemplating similar strategy. They know they've got to get beyond lap 140. Even then, that's, uh, what, 85 laps from the finish. That's a long way to go on a tank of fuel, particularly if they don't get yellow. And if you've done your sums right, then hopefully your need for fuel and new tires come at approximately the same time. More traffic now. You know, that's one of the big factors. You've got to have that car well balanced to go 85 laps and not have a tire problem or have it just going away a little bit. The driver uh, likes to keep those nice and fresh underneath him. Paul Tracy now has an 8.6 second lead over the seventh place machine of Mauricio Gugelman, Dario Franchitti in third. So Paul Tracy rocketing through traffic here. Gugelman second, Franchitti third, DeFerrin fourth, Allenzer Jr. fifth. We'll be back for more of the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix in just a moment. Live at Nazareth, you watch the battle for third place. Mauricio Gujami, next to last in the line. There he is to the right of your screen in red, blue, and white. Just behind him, Al Unzer Jr. We've had some green flag pit stops. Dario Franchitti came in, went back out on the track in 16th spot. He's among the fastest cars on the racetrack right now, and he went 76 laps on a load of fuel. But he is several laps down now. But he went down because he made a pit stop under a green. That shows how fast they are lapping. Paul Tracy is the leader, now leading by 12.8 seconds. 
over the new second place man, Gilles DeFerrin, who's gotten around Mauricio Gujelmin. Gujelmin is third. Alenzer Jr. is fourth. And this race is now going down at a furious pace. We've had a long stretch of green flag racing after six caution flags in the first 75 laps or so. Alenzer Jr. taking a look under uh, Big Mo, thinking, should I take a shot at him here? This is a great race. What this does, too, these guys are battling. That lets Paul Tracy be more comfortable through traffic. He's got a big lead. He's, he's shown a lot of poise at this race. He had not get frustrated. And he's doing exactly what he needs to do. Down to Gary Gerald. Out of the car, Max Pappas. Have they been able to pinpoint the electronic problem? You know, we were trying really to work hard on what it was and that we don't know yet, you know, the guys are looking at it. It was sad, you know, I was really enjoying, we were doing a good race and the pace was good, the car was fine, the MCI car was doing very good. Do you like oval racing on these short tracks? Mad Max loves ovals and this is my, you know, my bread every day. I would love to eat it every day. Thank you. All right, thank you, Gary and Max. Meanwhile, Alenzer Jr. goes around Mauricio Gugelman and he does it with authority. Bobby Rahal, he will be next man behind Mauricio Gujamin. All these are track positions. There is Richie Hearn just behind Rahal. And that red, white, and black car right there, Jason Rahal is in that blue and white. And these are all for position. This is a great battle. It is Tracy, DeFerrin, Unzer, Gujelman, Rahal, Hearn right there on your screen. Then Vassar, Herda, Andretti, and Pruitt now running. You gotta go to six gear, six gear for mileage. You heard that pit communication. I'm not sure who they were talking to, but you heard him say go to sixth gear for mileage. What that means is they run two top gears, a sixth and a fifth. They're only about 300 RPM different, but they'll put it in the lower one if they're racing for somebody to get a shot off the corner. They want fuel mileage, they go in the taller one so that they can run a little bit less RPM and save the fuel. Well, one man on the move right now is Al Lunzer Jr., who goes around Gilles DeFerrin and into second place. Now, what we could be seeing right here is as the fuel load lightens, he gets longer into his tires, his car is coming more to life, and the other guy's maybe going a little bit away, and his car's running better. Al Unzer Jr. runs 13.4 seconds behind his teammate Paul Tracy, the Penske team that has not won since the next to last race of 1995 is first and second here on their home track at Nazareth. And of course the frustrating part if you're Paul Tracy, you can have that big lead and he can have 12, 13 second lead up here and if they get a yellow, it's all wiped out. There is Paul Tracy just passing Mark Blundell. Let's see if we can pick up the interval to the second place car of his teammate. And that's how far back Alitzer Jr. is. There he is, second car in line. But don't forget, with this entire lap, it looks so big. That entire lap is 20 seconds. So you're 12 or 13, you're almost three quarters of a lap. And as we speak, Alenzer Jr. has taken a few ticks off his teammate. The gap now down to 12.1. And that, once again, is traffic. As you watch Gilles de Ferrin and Mauricio Gugelman. That's a good point. If you get a clear gap in front of you, you can make a lot of gain if the other guy's stuck behind some traffic. But remember, once he gets by that, you've still got to get by him. So you got to sit here and watch it for a while because that'll seesaw back and forth. And Danny, one of the problems for Mauricio Guzman is he's developed a vibration in the rear tire. It's kind of fortuitous, though, that they've scheduled a pit stop for around lap 142. So they've told Big Mo, just live with it. We'll bring you in, whether it's green or yellow, around 142. Thank you. Richie Hearn makes the pass on Bobby Rahal. Put Hearn now up into the fifth spot, dropping Rahal to sixth. And he is quickly going away from Bobby Rahal. He pulled out a big gap right there. So he's obviously got a quick car, which we saw this morning was warm up for second quickest. Now you ride with Jimmy Vassar. That's Ray Hall just ahead. And Vassar, ooh, took a look down the inside, thought better of it. That's a very quick air, and he barely even lifts there. Breathes it a little bit here going in turn two. It's a very fast racetrack. Just behind Vassar is Michael Andretti, now up to eighth spot. And Andretti makes a move on Vassar. Don't forget something we haven't mentioned a lot of. The Goodyear tire at this track seems to be a little bit better. Hey, what the climb? Mike Goodyear, so is Bobby Ray Hall, but Jimmy's on Firestones. Pit stop coming up. The driver being asked, do you want the primes? Meaning the prime versus the optional tire. That's... Oh, 
That's just a different compound tire. Usually A6, one is Michael. softer than the A6. other. Richie Hearn. Next we're going to put the time. Gary Gerald on Michael Andretti. Well, I'll tell you what, this Newman Haas team down here is just starting to crank with vitality because they see their man carving his way back through the field. And remember, as they tried to get closer to the sequence of the race leaders, they can go a little longer. If they can go longer, that means they have to take on less fuel. And you hear the conversations going on, pit wall to cockpit, and they are hoping that that's going to give them a slight advantage with a quick late stop. We just watched Paul Tracy go around Bobby Rahal. Rahal shown in ninth place. Tracy has gone 74 laps on his load of fuel, and he has now lapped all the way up to eighth spot. Bobby Rahal looks like he's slowing some to me. I don't mean that he's got a mechanical problem. He just looks like he's dropping back like his tires are going. Four laps. On board with Bobby Rahal right there. Sounded like someone was asking how many more laps. Under green flag racing, we may be approaching a round of green flag stops. See, Bobby's slowing down there. He's on the inside of the track right there. And I think what he's doing, he's probably got a little bit of a tire problem. He's saying, how many laps till I've got a pit? Because he's making a decision whether to stay out. Just behind him is Mark Blundell and then his teammate Brian Herta. And those are for position. Ray Hall ninth, Blundell tenth, Brian Herta eleventh. Remember, we talked about this at the top of the show. When your car starts going off on those tires, that is a handful and very scary to drive around here. And he's tippy toeing right there. He doesn't want to make a mistake, but he wants to get to his window. There you see Bobby Ray Hall. Guys, working. Mauricio Guzman is on pit road. Now remember, he had a vibration in one of the rear tires. This is a chance for them to make that change. Firestone shot, he goes through, takes out a full load of fuel, taking a long time to take the fuel on. He's off and away. While back on the track, Blundell dives for the pit lane entrance to your right as Bobby Ray Hall continues. That'll take a little of the heat off of Ray Hall. Alex Zanardi in the red Target Ganassi machine on the left. Zanardi in 14th. There's Michael Andretti. Four, still 14. That's Michael's voice talking to his pit, running in fourth place. Now you look at that shot and you wonder why he just shot away like that. Michael had to lift right at the time when Gilles de Ferrin put the throttle down. Tires oh, yellow, up Mike, ahead, yellow, yellow, yellow. off on the front stretch. Parker Johnstone. Off and on again, working his way back up to speed. Clipped a cone that was set there. I thought it might have been a piece no, of his race car. He actually got it sideways, spun on, got into the grass. He didn't get spinning around, got onto the grass, hit a cone and got back on. Good piece of driving there. Marco Johnstone on this track five seasons ago auditioned for the job as primary test driver as Honda made their entrance into IndyCar racing. Another look at what happened to oh, Johnstone. Oh, just as Allenzer Jr. came up behind him. And we now have a full course caution as they go out on the racetrack to see if anything came off Parker Johnstone's car. Now this is at the time we might see a lot of people start diving in the pits at this stage. The pits are closed right now as the safety car comes out to get the field under control. They'll pick up that man, Paul Tracy, and they have done so. Just behind Paul Tracy runs the lapped machine of Jimmy Vassar. Bob, one car that was in the pits when the yellow came out was that of Scott Pruitt. They have elected to go to the option tire for Firestone, looking for more grip, maybe shorter life, to go the distance on this one. They completed their service in 12 and a half seconds, and then everybody else had to wait to make the pit stop. All right, thank you, Gary. The pits are now open for lead lap cars, and as you see, the race leader, Paul Tracy, takes the left and heads for fuel and tires. Jimmy Vassar will remain on the racetrack until the pits are opened for the lapped cars. Once again, let's get down to the pits in Jackaroo. Paul Tracy was conversing with his team before he came out of pit road asking for a tire pressure change. The telemetry from on board said no, it was not necessary. They are making no major changes to the car. He lights up the tires and he is off and away. Meanwhile, his teammate, Alan Sir Jr., is still at work here, taking on fuel. 
It's taking a long time for the fuel, but they're off and away. DeFerrin in here now. Boy, lightning quick service. Just waiting on fuel. DeFerrin, Unser, and, and Reddy all converging together trying to get to that single lane pit road. Unser got out first. There's Jules DeFerrin just ahead of Michael Andretti. That was close indeed. Now the lap car's coming in. We're busy. Hey, in the Michael, lane. we're good we'll to the back. end. We're good to the end. Moment. Michael Andretti is good to the end. Four. Now the Talladega 500 was rained out today at the Talladega Super Speedway. It will be on Monday on ESPN as well. Check your local listings, 12 noon Eastern time. We are back under green flag here at Nazareth. Paul Tracy leads with 153 laps in the books, 225 scheduled. You ride with Michael Andretti in fourth place. Now just before we went to the break, you heard his team telling him, we're good to the end, meaning you have all the fuel and tires you'll need to run to the end of the race. He goes around Jill DeFerrin into third place. A year ago, Michael Andretti came to this racetrack with a probation for rough driving, trying to get their act together. They came here, and with the help of some problems plaguing Paul Tracy, Michael Andretti came through to win the first of what would eventually become a series-high five victories with the help of our Honda Alicam, you watch he, Michael Andretti closing up on Ellinger Jr. Yeah, he's closing. They're going through turn two right now. It's slightly uphill. They'll come off of turn two. Now it starts going downhill. You can't see this. It's going downhill. Break lightly here. Drops down the hill. They're on the gas. They're now coming back up a slight hill. Start finish. Flat out through this turn one right there. And look at Michael close on Paul Tracy. Check that, Allenzer Jr. just ahead of him, but boy, what does that tell us about the way Michael Swift works when it's full of fuel on new tires? Well, it, it says he's working good in early stages. We saw that Allenzer Jr. worked better at the later stages on the field, so what he's gonna try to do is hold him off. Allenzer will try to keep his great rival behind him until his Penske Mercedes, both cars on Goodyear tires, begins to work. See, it's dropping away right down there. When they accelerate, now it's slightly climbing uphill again. Pushing even worse. Something about it starting to work. Michael Andretti talking with his crew. Across the start finish line downhill into turn one then through the long turn two and they begin to climb tremendous elevation changes on this racetrack now diving downhill towards three almost like a carousel turn way down low with banking up to your right and that's the only place you touch the brakes and believe it or not these guys barely touch the brake in there they just kind of roll in grab it a little bit and pick the throttle back up Earlier in the race, Walter Sala shows what happens if you get loose in that corner. They're all accelerating all the way around there. They're flat out going through here. Minus 12 on fuel, Michael. Minus 12 on fuel. That's Lee White talking with Michael Andretti. Michael taking a look right there. Oh, you can see it in the he said his left mirror has fallen down. Mirror has fallen down. Just I can't see anything on my left mirror. It means it's dropped down at the probably the glass right in there in the center. Coming up on the inside. And that's the critical mirror around an oval because he's running on the right side up against the wall. So we can only see if somebody's come along. Now the crew will have to tell him if another car is there. But these guys are okay for the bottom. away from everybody, so I don't think it's a concern. You heard him ask, tell me who's coming up on my left side. Nobody coming up right now. Paul Tracy leads this battle by 2.3 seconds. But what we do see out there in front of him is they're starting to get to traffic. You see the cars right in front of him. Now we're going to see who's working well. Paul Tracy is somewhere in that traffic. Jack Aroot 
but for Allenser Jr., as he sees a fast closing Mar uh, Michael Andretti, he's being counseled by his mentor, Roger Penske, to conserve fuel. So they're not running at full optimum speed right now. Al Jr. needs to conserve fuel because neither of Team Penske's cars intend to come to pit road again. Well, we've heard that Michael's got enough fuel to go the whole way. So uh, they're probably racing. They've got that mixture turned down a little bit. And they are closing on race leader Paul Tracy. The gap down to 1.6 seconds. Tracy in that group of slower cars up ahead. But that's probably dictated by traffic. Once Paul gets past that group, then he'll stretch it back out. Don't forget, these guys have to get past all these cars as well. So it, it seesaws back and forth, and it'll readjust as they get through there. Greg Moore just ahead of Al Lenzer Jr. There's Paul Tracy at the bottom of your screen, car number three, and a couple of slower cars. Mark Blundell and Greg Moore, and then Al Lenzer Jr. followed closely by the black machine of Michael Andretti. Michael looking high through turn two. The problem out there is if you get a look, shot sometimes, you see all those marbles out there. That's where the rubber is. And you can get out there, and it's very slippery. Look, he dropped back a lot. Michael Andretti caught out. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. We are back live at Nazareth Speedway, where you ride with Michael Andretti, slower traffic ahead, but perhaps more importantly, Al Unzer Jr. is behind. Here's the pass. Looked like Al Unzer Jr. got held up a little bit through turn one, lost his momentum, and Michael took advantage of it. And now Paul Tracy runs just ahead of Michael Andretti, who has disposed of one Bensky Mercedes. He's got the other one ahead, and this is for the race lead. Oh, Paul had to lift out there. Michael tried to gas it to take advantage of it, but Paul just closed the door. He's not running well in traffic. One of Bozell plus five and later. How these guys stay so calm on those radios in the heat of battle like this is beyond me. See how the gap has come down as Michael Andretti bids for his third victory here on his home track at Nazareth. Only Emerson Fittipaldi has won here three times. Michael has two. Oh, yellow, 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 yellow flag. Yellow, 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 turn two, turn two, driver's right. In turn two, driver's right. Mark Blundell has put his Reynard into the wall on driver's right. Looks to me like he got up high in that gray and just went up there and get all those marbles out there you can see them all over the tire right there and he just gets up there look at his tires even on the right side look at the right side right there there's all the marbles look at that and when you get on those things you try to run a little high you just it's just like we say it's like getting on marbles eighth caution of the day is mark blundell a veteran of Formula One action continues his rough learning curve on the ovals. We'll be back with more of the Bar Spock Plug Grand Prix in just a moment. Back live at the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix, you ride with defending PPG Car World Series champion Jimmy Vassar. We are under our seventh full course caution of the day. Vassar running in the fifth spot after starting 12th. His teammate, Alex Zanardi, we talked about at the top of the show started 21st he also has advanced seven places to 15th on the running order let's check in on some of our other stories Goodyear's comeback after Firestone swept the podium two weeks ago in Long Beach Goodyear took seven of the top ten in qualifying seven of the top ten cars on the track right now are on Goodyear rubber pit strategy but with all the yellow flags a record seven thus far the teams have had plenty of time to think about it Penske's home advantage. Paul Tracy runs first. Al Unser Jr. in third. So there is some home cooking going on this weekend here at Nazareth. And traffic has simply been the story all day long. 
Here's a program note. Wednesday night on ABC starts with a brand new Drew Carey show at a special time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, followed by a new Grace Under Fire. Then you've heard about it for weeks. TV Guide calls it a triumph, destined to be one of television's most memorable moments. Ellen, the episode with guests Laura Dern, Demi Moore, Oscar winner Billy Bob Thornton, Oprah Winfrey, and more, all Wednesday night on ABC. at Nazareth Speedway. We have a green flag on lap 190 of 225. Paul Tracy leads Michael Andretti, and they quickly put about 20 car lengths on Al Unser Jr. in third. That yellow came at a good time for Paul Tracy because he got out of that traffic jam he was in. He's now out there with uh, nobody in front of him. And he's trying to stretch it out, but Michael's not going anywhere. And Danny, he's been having just a little bit of problem with his car. He's not happy with the handling as we watch on board with Michael Andretti there for a minute. He knows that Andretti is closing. They've been talking about changing the bar inside the car. It didn't respond, but now with some clean air, things look a little better for Tracy. Okay, what that is, is that's an anti-roll bar, anti-sway bar for a lot of people. That can adjust the weight. You can't really see it. It's down here in this area right there. They make an adjustment, move it forward or backwards. It stiffens it or softens it, whichever way. We have a crash, a crash on the racetrack. Richie Hearn is one of the cars involved. Parker Johnstone, another. Roberto Moreno spins to avoid the wreckage. Richie Hearn at the lower right. You're on board with Moreno, and look at the tire tracks that tell you where he's been. Parker Johnstone on the left in the green and white team green machine. Boy, this is going to take a little time to clean up, and there's only about 34 laps left in the uh, race. And you want to get through there. See them, see them. The leaders are are putting themselves through there very carefully, trying not to pick up any debris on their tire. They can't afford a pit stop right now, and they do not want to pick up a piece that could puncture a tire. Our ninth yellow flag of the day, extending the record. As the field tippy toes by Roberto Moreno's Swift Ford. Moreno talks with the crew asking for a push. It appears his car is undamaged. Let's take a closer look. Oh, Parker's right up along the wall in the green and white car. Rich Aaron's it. Whoa, and look at Greg Moore just got through there, but hit that back wing. And and it looks like in the whoa. If we can see what happened. Okay, you'll see him. It looks like those two guys must have touched the red and orange car going down here on the lower part of your screen. Danny, let me interrupt you one second real quick. Richie Hearn is on his way for a medical checkup. First of all, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. What happened? Uh, just boy cell, I think, and uh, Parker got together, and uh, I was just an innocent victim. You know, I... Parker should have let everybody go by a long time ago because I think he was a lap down. And, and, you know, I just got caught out, so. Sometimes that happens, guys. He's on his way to the CART Medical Center for the mandatory checkup. All right, let's take another look. You'll see Bozell and Parker Johnstone come through. Yeah, you see those? There's Bozell there. Parker's up here. And Richie Hearns was, was suffered from that. Let's ride on board with Roberto Moreno. It's happening just ahead of him. He'll spin at the end of it. He sees all the action, jumps on the brakes, loses control, oh, and just spins around. Doesn't really hit anything. Don't think he has any damage. That's why he wanted to push and get going. You want damage? There's some. That's Parker Johnstone's car. He is done for the day. We are in for another yellow flag. We'll be back with more of the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix from Nazareth. Welcome back live to Nazareth, kicking off the short track portion of the PPG Kart World Series. Today it's Nazareth. Two weeks from now, we'll be journeying south of the border, well south of the border, to the land of Carnival and Samba, Ipanema Beach, Rio de Janeiro, where Mark Blundell had a savage introduction to oval track racing, but native son Andre Rivero came through to win last year's Rio 400. It'll be coming up May 11th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on ABC Sports. There you see the continuing activities cleaning up a spinning crash involving Parker Johnstone and Richie Hearn. 
Roberto well, they, Moreno also involved, but he apparently is undamaged and is in the pits. Well, they've got the car picked up right here behind the wrecker, and that blue thing that you're seeing them put underneath the car is what they call a diaper, so that everything doesn't go out on the track, and that they can get the car off without leaking oil and fluids all over the track. Down to the pit lane and Gary Gerald. Adrian Fernandez was a victim earlier in this race. The same thing that got your teammate, Andre Ribeiro, something in the driveline, maybe a CV joint. Yeah, apparently on the left side, you know, I was running behind uh, Alex Anardi, and basically we were doing some competitive times, but then the drive shot, I think, broke and sent me to the wall. So it was unfortunately because uh, we wanted to see how the car will develop through the whole run because, you know, we start still fighting with the car and trying to de do the best effort we can. But we're trying not to lose the optimism to the, to, for the season. And a tough start for the Tasman team. I know they've worked on the aerodynamics, some new wing packages. Do you feel like you're making progress? Yeah, sometimes it looks like we're making progress, and uh, but sometimes it doesn't improve on the track. So we're doing our best, and we're not giving up. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Up. All right, thank you, Gary. As the cleanups continue, we have one more look at that accident. You ride with Raul Boisel. Now, right in front of him, right there, Parker Johnstone dives underneath. Parker comes down. Boy, they touch there. And Good job for Rob Bozell to get it back on the track after that contact, but uh, unfortunate for everybody behind him. Second DNF or did not finish of the year for Parker Johnstone and Team Green. The same for Richie Hearn and Della Pena Racing. Now, of course, what this does is these laps are being ticked off right under a yellow, and what's going to happen is we're going to have kind of a sprint to the end. There is Paul Tracy behind the safety car, known as one of the most aggressive drivers in the sport. Paul Tracy knows what he is about. We had a nice conversation with him earlier in the weekend. We pointed out his reputation for aggression and asked him just how much of a risk taker he thinks he is. Really not much at all. I mean, I like to go fast in everything I do, whether it's, you know, go-karts or bicycles or skiing. But, I mean, I'm not really that competitive outside of a race car. It's just uh, when I put the helmet on, I turn into a different person. I guess I'm not very aggressive, you know, around the paddock or, or you know, not really the type of person to get it in confrontations with people. I'm fairly mild-mannered, but when the helmet goes on, look out. Well, <laughs> he spelled it out there, and, uh, and he is uh, awful quick in a race car, and he's not afraid to... Uh, Stick the nose of that car in there and, and be aggressive with some other drivers. And there you see Michael Andretti. Gary Gerald has more on his situation. Well, a momentary concern down here. There was a radio conversation that thought alluded to a possible leaking tire with Michael Andretti. Check with Lee White and the members of the team. They said, no, we have no problems. We're just running out of time. I asked him specifically about what we perceived as a radio conversation earlier about a mirror dropping. And he said it wasn't Michael. They think it was Parker Johnstone. So hopefully we've clarified that situation. And who knows, that mirror situation may have somehow contributed to the woes of Johnstone just a few moments ago. Well, that, that sure would help uh, to understand what happened there. Look at Michael Andretti's number. Second place start dropped all the way back to 13th on lap 98 then worked his way forward again with some canny pit strategy and some great driving. Right now he runs in second position. One thing that's going to happen here with this yellow too, if everybody was questionable of how much fuel that they had, they don't have any questions anymore and they're all going to turn their mixture up and run it 100% all the way to that checkered flag. And it should be a great battle. Consider this, the top six runners, Paul Tracy, Michael Andretti, Alunzer Jr., Jill DeFerrin, Jimmy Vassar, and Bobby Rahal account for 107 race victories in PPG Cup competition. A lot of experience right up front. And with that in mind, what's going through your mind as a driver preparing for the restart, Dave? Well, let's take Paul Tracy. All he's concerned about when those lights go off is to get a good run off of turn three, get it through there as smooth as he can, the power down, and just pull away from Michael Andretti. Michael Andretti, on the other hand, knows he has to stay as close as he can to him and take an advantage early on because he knows the longer he runs that Paul Tracy's probably going to pull away. 
Then we look at Al Unser Jr. He's got to try to stay with there. He dropped back a little bit on that last restart. He's got to try to stay right underneath Michael and make something happen. You and Joe DeFerrin, same thing. He's got to stay right there, get a good start, and see if he can make something happen. Because if they stretch out, nobody's going to have a chance with that little, that few laps left in this race. All the front runners got a good dose of the oil dry they spread on the racetrack and then blow off with the help of a jet engine mounted on the back of a trailer. I'm sure everybody had their visors down for that. There you see the dryer firing up on afterburner. Does a remarkable job of getting moisture off this racetrack when it rains. Down to the pit lane now in Jackaroo. Well, Bob, behind me is the CART Medical Facility, and it will update you on Parker Johnstone. Parker will be in there for about 15 or 20 minutes. He is fine, except for an injured right hip. It's swollen, it's sore, so what they're doing simply is applying ice. They're not very concerned about it. He'll be released in about 20 minutes. If we're still on the air, we'll try and get a word with him. One thing that I should tell you too, Jack, so that everybody at home knows, you said a mandatory stop for Richie Hearns. If you make contact in, in kart racing against the wall, you have to go to the medical center and be checked out. That's just a mandatory rule. Now they take to the warm-up lane to avoid the activity on the track, the cleaning up going on. The cart medical facility is absolutely mind-boggling a complete trauma facility that is completely portable and rolls with the series throughout North America and believe me from a driver's point of view that, that and the safety crew is one of our, our best friends out there those guys look after us everywhere we go around the world now we anticipate running long here at Nazareth but if you're just tuning in we want to remind you coming up next on ABC the Hershey's Kisses figure skating challenge the men versus the women including reigning world champion Tara Lipinski 96 world and U.S. champion Michelle Kwan Todd Eldridge Rudy Galindo Victor Petrenko and Paul Wiley it's all coming up next here on ABC so stay with us. As you can see no one has left that massive new grandstand. Built at a cost of some $8 million, seats 36,000 people, and every ticket was long sold for today's Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix, round four, the PPG Kart World Series for 1997. Another lap and a half will be back underway as you ride with Bobby Rahal. Let me tell you, under 20 laps, this is going to be a sprint to the finish. Everybody's going to have maximum fuel. They're going to have everything turned up and uh, try to make the most of uh, a short, short time. Down in Paul Tracy's pit, Jack Aroot. Well, Paul Tracy is ready for this restart. He's told his team he's ready to go. He knows Michael Andretti's on his back, but feels like as long as he stays out in open air, he shouldn't have a problem with handling, Danny. Well, that's his best friend right now. He's hoping that he'd go those 19 laps, build up a gap, and when if he catches a car before, they'll be able to stay out of trouble with lap traffic. Years before this was a paved track, the Nazareth Oval, known as Nazareth National Speedway, was a dirt track. And it shook to the thunder of modified stock cars and open sprint cars. Well, we've got classic short track racing coming up in a sprint format as we go green with 20 laps remaining. Paul Tracy and Michael Andretti, and Tracy has not lost Andretti one bit as we get back up to racing speeds. Michael Andretti did everything he had to, and Paul Tracy did what he had to. And look at that gap. Unfortunately, they left Allen Jr. and Jill DeFerrin a little bit, and Paul is ever so slightly stretching it out. You see the rest of the running order at the upper left of your screen with 19 laps to go, and they will click off at about 20 seconds a lap. 20.7, that first lap for Paul Tracy, 21-0 for Michael Andretti. At that speed, 20 laps goes by awful quick. Tracy now drawing away slightly from Andretti. Tracy in the red and white car, Michael Andretti, the man in black. Michael looks like he closed that gap down ever so slightly there. Doesn't it? Looks like he's closed back up. Last lap and fastest lap of the race thus far goes to Michael Andretti with 16 more still to come, and Paul Tracy ahead of him. Now, what might Michael be planning for Paul Tracy here? Has he shown him everything he's got, and if he hasn't... 
Oh, what he's, he's not. Set him up? He's not waiting. He's trying to close this gap as quick as he can because as you get closer to the end, you only get a couple opportunities to pass. If you got fewer laps, those opportunities are going to evaporate very quickly. He needs to get right behind him, put some pressure on him, particularly coming out of turn two where he can try to outbreak him. That's the only place they break slightly down into three. Right here, he's trying to close that gap. You see Paul Tracy getting out there wider and wider. Michael seems like he's got a better line. Closes up on him through there. What a confrontation. Arguably the fastest man in PPG Cup competition is Paul Tracy. The most successful active driver in the series with 36 career victories is Michael Andretti. Oh, he's, he's close. He's, Paul's car doesn't seem to be as good off of turn two. And Michael's is better. He gets to run on him down that back straightaway. So now what I've got to be thinking if I'm Michael's, I've got to stay very close to him in one right there where they just went through. Stay tight on him in two. See if I can get a better run. Al Unzer Jr. runs almost four full seconds behind his teammate Paul Tracy. There you see Unzer back there. This is all coming down to Tracy and Andretti with 12 to go. And you saw just outside the shot was traffic. This is coming, gonna come into play because I think Michael's car is handling better than Paul Tracy's. 10 to go. Next time past the flag stand, Roberto Moreno, Michael Andretti's teammate, is just ahead. Oh, he had Ten left there. Michael. 10 to go. Oh, big lift there on Michael's part. You see him had to jump out of the throttle. Paul goes in there quick, but Michael seems to gain a little bit here. You heard Lee White tell Michael Andretti, 10 to go, 9 to go. Next time past the flag stand, Greg Moore just ahead of race leader Paul Tracy. And then Dario Franchini Nine left, ahead of Moore. Nine to go. Traffic can really be your friend or your enemy here. Let's see who it plays out to help the most. Lee White tells Michael, nine to go. Counting down the laps. Franchini on the right up ahead. Will he be out of the way? Uh -oh. No, as Michael comes through. That helped Paul Tracy a little bit. See, that gap just a little bit because he had to wait just a little Eight bit. Eight laps, Mike. Eight laps. Eight laps, says team manager Lee White. Slowly, Andretti claws his way back to Tracy's gearbox. Seven laps, seven laps. Ooh. Paul wanted to go inside that car. That's Juan Fangio. didn't give him the gap. Juan Fangio and the Toyota up ahead. Now he pulls to the low side to let the leaders through. Michael taking a look, looking down the inside to see if he could get something. Paul wasn't going to give him an inch there. Six laps to go now. Tracy looking for points. Michael Andretti with a first and a third in the first two races at DNF at Long Beach. Well, he closes up on him there through one. Had to back off a little bit through turn two. As we get down, fewer and fewer laps. It's going to get tougher and tougher to get back. Fewer opportunities. Four laps to Four go. Four laps, Mike. Four laps. With his hometown crowd willing him on as best they can, Michael Andretti is scratching his head, trying to figure out a way by Paul Tracy. Now three to go. Roughly one minute of racing at these speeds. cloud of white smoke yellow yellow Down yellow in turn one yellow, we yellow. have a yellow flag there's roger penske on the pit wall looking that, in the direction of the smoke that's the race that'll be the race that'll they'll they'll finish under a yellow and paul tracy will win and there's lee white in the foreground with michael uh, with mario andretti that is looking up the racetrack 
I think it's just dawning on everybody that after all of that excitement, it appears that this race will end under yellow down to Jackaroo. I have not seen you smile like that, Roger Penske, since 1995. Well, that was a great run. I tell you, Michael gave us a real run. This is a track that you got to handle all day. Paul did an outstanding job. And of course, we needed this one. You know, we've been, uh, we came up with no water last year. So maybe uh, finishing one and three means we're back on the track. But uh, I tell you, the engine ran great. And I just got to hand it to all our guys uh, back in England, the uh, designers. And of course, Tracy and Andre can't have two better pilots. That's right. And I'll tell you what, very important, Gary. And Lee White just passed on the message. This has got to be a heartbreaker, denying you a chance for the last couple of laps. Got to be heartbreaking. Well, for sure, Mike really drove his heart out. The car was great. We really had the car to beat. It's unfortunate we had the flat. But, uh, you know, we'll get them next time. Boy, this Swift is something on the ovals, guys. Now let's take a look. You see the safety trucks to the right of your screen. As Paul Tracy gets for the flag, there is Juan Fangio, apparently a massive engine meltdown for Fangio, brought out the yellow flag. Checkered flags wave. First victory for Penske Racing since Vancouver in 1995. The first win since June of 95 for Paul Tracy. Coming up next from Greensboro, North Carolina, the Hershey's Kisses figure skating challenge. We apologize, we won't be able to stay around and talk with race winner Paul Tracy. Be sure to join us in two weeks for the Rio 400. We'll get back to it again on a short oval. I'm Bob Varsha for Danny Sullivan, Gary Gerald, and Jack Aroon. Thanks for being with us. So long from Nazareth Speedway in the hills of Eastern Pennsylvania. Congratulations to Paul Tracy, the winner of the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix.